Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns at each knitting workshops and I uh, sell yarns. In today's video I'm going to show you how to do the clasped weft join which I always struggle to say. I don't know why but I can never say it. Uh, if I say it quickly I can't say it. Uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and please leave me a comment if you have any questions. Have you tried this join before? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments below. I've used it a few times before, but I used it on this um, cow. This is the Trenor Mobius Brioche Cow. So it's a Mobius um, cow. So it ha you cast on uh, with a twist. So you're knitting in both directions at the same time. So the cast on is in the center here. And then you knit that way. When you do one row, you've added one round that way and one round this way. So you're knitting in both directions at the same time, which means that there really isn't a right or wrong side of this pattern, which means that you have to be careful to make sure that your ends are hidden properly and secure properly so they don't show. So I used the um, clasp weft join for most of the joins I did on this one. There were a few ends like the cast on end and the cast off end and a couple of other ends that I wove in and I have a separate tutorial on that so I will link that below this video but for most of these I use the clasp, clasp weft join um, I noticed I have one end there that I just noticed I haven't trimmed properly so I've got a pair of scissors here so I'm just going to do that now so I don't forget um, I was going to try and work out where I actually um, finished casting off but I can't see it because then I would be able to show you what the how invisible this clasp, clasped weft joint is. But I can't work out where I've actually um, started and finished a cast on. The cast on, um, so the cast off covers this whole pink edge all the way around. Um, just one continuous long cast on no, and I can't I can't see it so I was going to try and show you where I joined but I was looking at this before I started filming and I couldn't see it and I thought maybe when I'm looking at it when I'm filming I can see it um I can see I've got a join there I've got a tail there that I haven't trimmed properly so I'm assuming it was probably in this area here somewhere that I um changed colors so I've got another in there that I haven't trimmed down completely. I was obviously a bit lazy when I was trimming my ends. So somewhere around here. So as you can see, you can't really see where I've joined in with the cl a class buff join. I think it depends a little bit on what stitch pattern you're using and what yarn you're using. I have used it on lace patterns before and it wasn't as invisible as this. So let me show you what I mean when I talk about the clasp weft join. So I'm going to use this yarn to join in because it's a different color than what I'm knitting with. And I'm going to show you specifically how to do this working on a brioche pattern. But you can use this for anything. You can use it for stocking stitch. Um, very good if you're making like scrappy projects where you're joining in loads of odd balls of yarn. Um, so I'm going to change this color for this color. They're both blues, but this one has sort of variegated self-striping blues. Uh, and this one is teal so I'm going to trim this end now how long you leave the ends depends on what you're making um, if it's a, and how slippery the yarn is if the yarn is very slippery and you're worried about the yarns kind of sliding out then I would make the end slightly longer but you don't need to lay, leave it like massively long so let me just get these old yarns out of the way so this is the yarn that I am finishing this is the yarn that I'm starting with so you basically want to loop these yarns around each other so there's a few different ways you can do this I'm going to put the new yarn down like that I know it's not that visible <laughs> against this wooden surface but hopefully you can see it then I'm going to take the other one yarn and put it over about halfway so I've cut this yarn so about halfway I have the other yarn crossing over doesn't matter if it crosses above or below, it doesn't really matter. Whichever one crosses below, fold that one over like that. And then you fold the other one over like that. So basically this is what you end up with. So you have the tail here. It goes around through that loop and back to the needle. And the new yarn goes the tail here 
through the old yarn and then to the ball of yarn. So just make sure that you have a bit of yarn pulled out on either side. And then I'm going to hold this and start knitting. Now you want the end that you're going to start knitting with. So you're going to carry on knitting with your old colour. And you want the end to kind of go past where you join. So you don't want to start knitting. Hang on, I'm holding it the wrong way around. There we go. You don't want to start knitting and then knit a few stitches and then come to your end. So I don't want my end to be like over here. I want my end to be... So that when I start knitting, my end is like as if I've already knitted past it, if that makes sense. So it's on the right. So I'm doing brioche, so I'm going to do a slip on with the yarn over. I'm doing this continental style. It doesn't matter whether you do continental style or English style. Slip on with the yarn over, pearl, uh, brioche pearl, slip on with the yarn over. So I'm now knitting with two colours, with two strands holding two strands together. Now the cow that I did this on was a four ply and it's a thin four ply and I didn't notice any kind of bulkiness where I joined them. You have to check the project you're making whether it's going to show. It might be worth doing this on the swatch just to check whether you can see where you joined and how thick it makes the fabric. So if you're doing this English style, you take the yarn to the front, slip the stitch purlwise and then you can take the yarn around to the back to the front again to purl the next stitch. So you're just slipping and knit, purling like you normally do with brioche. If you are doing this for a, a non-brioche project, you're just knitting or doing stocking stitch or purling or whatever, you just knit or purl or do whatever stitch pattern you're normally doing. Uh, just because I'm showing this for a brioche project doesn't mean that that's all it needs to be. So I'm now got to that was the last stitch in the old color and i'm now knitting with the new color so slip purl slip brioche purl slip brioche purl okay i'll do a couple of more so just keep an eye on when you're coming towards the end of your tail and when you have a little bit of a tail left or you've decided you've knitted over enough stitches so it depends on what i'm making i think for this cowl i probably did like about 15 stitches in each color I think because it's quite thin yarn and it's uh, it has silk in it so it's a little bit slippery but not too much so now I've decided I've knitted over enough um, stitches so I can drop this yarn so I did these stitches in the old color and then you can see it changes to the new color here so I've done a few stitches in the new color and I'm going to drop the tail so I'm going to take the tail separate the tail from the working yarn let the tail hang down and then when you finish your knitting you can either trim this tail or you can weave it in a couple of stitches if you want it depends on what you're doing i do have a tutorial for how i wove in the ends on my brioche cowl so i will link that below this video um, and that will work for any brioche project not just this cowl okay so i've come to the end of the row now so you can see Nearly half the row is in the old colour and then the half the row is in the new colour. If you want your new colour to start at the beginning of the row, you have to work out, you have to actually change the colours before you finish the previous row. So you have to work out how many stitches, how much yarn you need to, need to knit your remaining stitches so that you finish this old colour when you're at the end of the row. I didn't bother with that here and on the previous one, on the uh, cowl I knitted, that was knitted in the round so there wasn't um, a side and um, I didn't I, I changed at the beginning of the row so the first few stitches of the new row was in the old color and then I changed to the new color but because the way I was changing colors in this cowl and the fact that some of the colors are slightly variegated it didn't really make any difference so I'm going to actually know I'm doing forget I'm doing brioche so I'm going to slide the stitches back to the beginning of the needle and I'll just work a few stitches in the other color for my of my brioche project just so you can see what it looks like so um this will be different if you're doing stocking stitch because you won't have to knit a row again but i'm having to knit a row again because i'm doing brioche so i'm doing knit brioche knit slip with the yarn over so this one when i come to this brioche knit this is the first one where i used my old yarn and because i started on the slip stitch which probably wasn't a good idea the yarn is a bit loose um and you can see instead of having one 
yarn over that needle like you normally would do with brioche I have two but because the end is here it's a little bit loose so I'm going to knit that brioche knit and then I'll just pull that a bit tight to tighten it slip and then oh hang on so yeah I made a mistake there I only slip one loop I have to slip two because remember that stitch has two loops because I was knitting with two loops two strands so slip and then this brioche knit has two strands for the yarn over because I was knitting holding two strands together essentially slip so just make sure you're slipping both strands knit slip brioche knit slip brioche knit and here that's where my um, color change happened and then slip so you just got to be careful the round or row after you did the clasp breath join that you um, watch out because you will have two strands for each stitch so for the uh, stitches I'm slipping on this row because I'm doing brioche there are two stitches and for the ones I'm knitting I've got my knit stitch plus the two strands for the yarn over I'm just going to finish this very quickly so as I said I'm showing you this specifically on brioche because that's the project I've just used it for you don't have to do this on a brioche project um, you can do it on anything I'm going to finish that uh, there there we go you can do it on anything it doesn't have to be a brioche project um, you can use it for stocking stitch you can try it for lace I tried it for lace and I wasn't that happy with it um, lace is a little bit more tricky you can try it on uh, stocking stitch you can do it on the pearl or a knit row you can try it with uh, ribs garter stitch anything just because I'm showing it on brioche doesn't mean you have to do it on brioche anyway I hope that was helpful that's the joint that I use for my um, Trenor Mobius cow for this version the other version which I knitted first I tried a few different joints and I decided that the clasp weft join was the best one I think I have another tutorial with a few different joints so I will see if I can find that and link it below this video I'll also link the pattern for the Trenor cowl and the project blog I did for the Trenor cowl and the um, weaving in ends and blocking video that I did for this cowl so I'll link all those videos videos below Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, just ask them below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.